Newly, Newly stocked, stocked on the, the shelves is box, is box number 512 with your hosts Aeon and the Lioness, Black, Black trans, trans women, and excellent in defying all life expectations. The show begins now. Welcome back to the fourth episode of Box Number 512 Podcast. I am Aeon. And I'm the Lioness. Before we get started, just want a a brief reminder that the podcast is now available on Apple Apple Podcasts. So make sure you search for us, for you iPhone users, and make sure you subscribe. Also, we're in the process of getting approved for Google Podcasts. So hopefully by the time this episode drops, we're also on Google Podcasts for all of you Android users, just trying to get on more platforms so you guys can have access to the episodes. And as a reminder, we drop new episodes every Friday. Also, uh, message send us messages um, at our email for just letters, inquiries at box number five twelve podcast at gmail.com. That's B O X N O. 512 P O D C A S T at gmail.com. So just make sure um, you, if you want to send us emails, send them there. We're also on social media. Um, make sure you interact with our pages. We really want to hear from you and get your thoughts about the show. And also don't forget to um, rate us and um, comment and rate us and comment on, on Apple Podcasts. So now, now that we got that out of the way, Somebody did my my icebreaker. I sent it to your email last night. Yes, you did, girl. Yes, you did. Yes, did you <laughs> did you key? Um, was it? Hold on, let me check right now, bitch. Um, what was it? What was it, girl? Uh, bitch, I you know I'm you know you bitch you know. <laughs> the, you know my mind, girl. Don't the, put me on the spot the, on the line. <laughs> the Drake one. Um, Drake. Wait. So you send it to me via email? No, via Facebook Messenger. <laughs> Girl, um, yes, I'm on the Messenger now. So um, yeah, just scroll up. I sent it in late of night last night. Okay, girl. Let's see. Oh, the joking one with the meme. Is uh-huh. That one was y'all. Go- okay, funny as fuck. Somebody, what, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> do you, but do you, did you get it? Okay, hold on. Y'all going to hell. Oh, t- what is this? Is it that his son look light skinned? <laughs> <laughs> girl. So, what's the key? So, girl, now explain this to the fans because so they, so they'll know. No, they, no, they j- just. I think Drake's baby mother just released pictures of the son and people are so alarmed that he's like light skinned with like curly blonde hair. Like completely Caucasian appearing. Right. So (laughs) when I saw this meme, I fell out because I was just like, the girls just had too much time on their hands. (laughs) Because they painted. So apparently (laughs) it was a black art picture of, of Drake staring at a picture of his son with an Afro pic. And someone took the time to color over it with a yellow pencil and like a white pencil and try to like paint over it. And so Girl, give a give a very micro, Microsoft paint tease. It is. It's a hilarious meme. You had to be there to see it, but that is fucking hilarious. And you know what is funny? It's because that is really how jeans turn out. That is really how jeans turn out. But so like my mom is extremely fair skinned, like extremely fair skinned, and I'm the brownest of her children. And all of my life, people have been like, Is that your real mama? Like, and I'm like, Yes, why wouldn't she? And, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very much like, Oh, girl, well, you look like you might be adopted <laughs> because my mom is like, you know, really, really, really fair. Um, and so it's funny because it, um, it's, it's, it, it's a dynamic. I'm from South Carolina. And so, you know, people are really kind of color struck there, as we say. And so it's it's interesting because that was a fun, it's just a phenomenon. So I think that plays out in the internet. Like the idea that this famous black rapper has this completely white ass child. And it's like, um, okay, <laughs> you know, 
But no shade, he is half white, and then the That's the what lady I'm saying. is and she whole white, right? So, I mean, what were I, they expecting? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Drake is not the darkest dark, darkest black man mm. himself. No, he's not. So that just goes to show jeans can show up any kind of way, honey. Right. That is hilarious. And so for my joking meme or my joke on the internet, so mine was not really a joke as much as it was for my icebreaker. I wanted to talk about like <laughs> how people on the internet, like during this time right now, I feel like because we trapped in the house, like there are way too much intensity. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody on the internet is on 12 right now whether if for the emo people they're like double emotional for the real aggressive people they're like hyper aggressive <laughs> like for the real deep people they looking in the deep i have gotten i have had people that i have loved dearly get into with me with me this thing and then i'd be like girl i'm supporting you and they'd be like ow ow Bitch, I thought you wanted to battle. I'm like, no, girl, it's just the virus mm. you being inside. <laughs> like, it's really got you aggressive. So I just wanted to, like, point out, like, we are in a dead time right now where everything on the internet is on 12. And we got to remember, like, we, we are, humans are social beings. So anytime we're not able to fully move freely and be social, it affects your psyche. And so even for those of us that are the, are the strongest introverts, this is intense. Okay, and it's not letting up anytime soon. So I just want to take that quick little moment to acknowledge the shenanigans on the internet of people like really getting into it and like turn it down. Like realize that no one is at their best self right now. <laughs> so like let's not like be so at each other because as much love as I'm seeing on the internet and people coming together, I'm also seeing a lot of people just unnecessarily just battling, especially in the community. That is hilarious to me. Um, but yeah, speaking of battles, girl. Girl, have you been watching RuPaul's Drag Race season 12? Girl, you know I have. I have, I have, I have. And I'm up to date, bitch, on the tees. Okay. So who like who are your who are your top contenders? I was surprised that little Miss Um France went home. Um, I wasn't. I, well, let me tell you. I okay. was surprised because I feel like there are some people that should have went home before her. Like? Like, no shade, no shade, no shade, but um, Miss Pineapple, what was her name? Blue oh, Britta. Ooh, she should have hit it. Yeah, I don't, I don't see Miss Britta. She's, she's doing too much. She's doing, uh, yeah, she's doing the absolute really... most. And then, like, it's more of, like, also, too, like, bitch, you're actually talented. Like, get out of your own way. You know what I'm you, saying? Like her attitude is worse. Right. She's she kind of like reminds me of like Alexis Michelle, but worse because Alexis Michelle from season nine because Alexis Michelle was also is also from New York and she kind of got the delusional edit. But at least with Alexis Michelle, she wasn't trying to take anybody out. It was a key. With right. Britta, it's like delusional, and you're trying, you're try you're coming at Aiden, and you're no key using your using your using your I'm from the city privilege to judge another bitches. Right. Like you're not because the god bottom line is bitches. The judges are living whether you live or not. So focus on stepping your game up and not on how why they're on her. Right. Because bitch, you're not standing out. Even if you think that she's not supposed to be here, you're definitely not standing out. Sis. Right. So yeah, that that's another T. So like, what do you think about this Sherry Pie shit, girl? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest, and it's pro it's probably going to be an unpopular um, opinion. I don't I don't know if she necessarily should have been disqualified. Wait. Okay, so don't get us shut down, bitch. But it's no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I'm keying, I'm keying. Bitch. I'm keying. <laughs> no, it's a joke. So because, explain a little more. Okay, so Sherry Pie was disqualified. From you can't leave nine. that out there. <laughs> yeah, she was disqualified from season nine because she was involved in a a catfishing situation where she would pose as an agent as a casting agent and she would get these men really attractive men 
to send to send videos of them engaged in sexual activities to this suit up this fake casting director with the promise that they will be put in uh, parts in in like upcoming like movies and productions and stuff. Now I'm not saying that what she did was um, right or like bitch you tried it you you really tried it it was really fucked up but. I don't know. It just, it kind of seems like VH1 and the show were trying, they kind of went out of their way to cover their ass because they knew the bad press associated with it. But it was like, to me, it wasn't like she like sexually assaulted these individuals. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. I hear what you, I understand. I hear your perspective. Um. Yeah, it's just, it's, just, <laughs> it's like, I don't know. When I watched the Tyra Banks show, when she had a show back in the days, I know that, one, you don't pay somebody, you don't pay to be put on. And if anybody's asking you to send some sexually suggestive content where you're ejaculating for a part, I don't know. It just seemed like, I don't know. It just seemed like some bells would have been off in my head. Like, Girl, this is so, some tea. So maybe. beyond, so maybe the way I look at it is, is oh, I'm sorry, finish your thoughts. Sis. No, I don't. I I don't know. I, like I said, I don't want to like d- excuse Sherry's behavior because clearly, <laughs> sis, ha- sis had a problem because you did this multiple times, sis. <laughs> like he did, he did it multiple times, but she was working her set. But I don't know. I just think the res- I just think that the response. It, I don't know. I don't know if it was the best thing for the season. It's, you know, that's just how I feel about it. But you, go ahead. So here's my thought. I believe that part of her issue. So uh, if I just, even if you take the moral judgment off of it and you allow it to be something that a grown, consenting adults are able to do, my concern with her is my concern with the sh- well. The reason why I think the show did the right thing is because. One, I don't know how, so apparently she made it all the way to the finale, meaning right. she could have been a potential winner of the show. So I feel like it was work. and two, taking on the title of Drag Race requires that you enter into a very public position as the new face of the organization. And at least for your reign as the season whatever winner. Right. Now, and, and, and that winning allows you to be able to have all kinds of cash benefits, be able to tour, be able to participate in community. Now, here's the problem with that. If your spokesperson is somebody that has proven to be a problem to community and they've done something that even if you, whether or not you disagree or agree with it, it has caused some type of rift in community to where people are feeling like this is a predator of sorts. Even just even if you don't want to adjudicate the actual behavior, you have to acknowledge that that's a PR nightmare for any organization. So I appreciate the fact that RuPaul in this moment, realizing that also this is being in that position requires that you participate in conferences. It requires that you participate and in, 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 in engage with the community on a one on one basis. Miss Thing showed that she has an utter and complete lack of self-control because mm-hmm. even after the finale and the taping in the late time, you know, when they're supposed to wait until they re-record for the final final, she still was reaching out and doing it. Mm. Yeah. So see, that's the additional complication there is that there are alleged reports that Miss this Thing was continuing the behavior. So initially maybe when they first heard of it it was like okay girl this is he said she said we're not gonna get involved in this when it then escalates where we can now say okay bitch wait but like this new person that has the information that has the data that has all of this the thread of you reaching out to them trying to run the stunt bitch it's like okay now you clearly don't respect where you got in the competition right so that's where i then feel it's important for us to acknowledge, yes, they are consenting adults. And while I don't believe that everything 
everything I, I am one of those people that I do believe that we need to be more as a culture concerned about the actual facts and allowing things to play out before we just cancel people based on one person's word or or right. or, or a public campaign. However, dot 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 in this situation this is indicative of a pattern of behavior that I think is particularly problematic. And if nothing else, even if I don't judge the behavior as a businesswoman, as a business person, RuPaul, I respect that he looked at the situation and said, no ma'am, you won't be a part of my brand. Bitch, I didn't know that she did that during the gap period. Okay, they're my perspective. It's like, girl, so you, you, you just didn't give a fuck, bitch. <laughs> You did it, girl. That was your time period to be chill, girl, to atone, to get it together. Very that tease. Girl, you, you know the lawyer in me, girl, is always trying to, you know. But, um, n- will you, will, yeah. It's just, a, it's just an unfortunate uh, situation. And I think what people don't realize is that being on that, a platform that big it elevate it just elevates you to a new level. So if you have any personal shit going on, sis, you gotta get that together because what goes in the 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 wash comes out in the rinse, honey. So everybody And I wanna now in the spirit of the key of it all, now I wanna go back and double back for a second. And this is not to victim blame or shame. Or oh bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta step back for a second and acknowledge that if you're a grown fucking adult bitch and somebody's asking you to pull out your genitals on the internet, that's your no-no. 12-year-olds know. Genitals and ass. That's what kind of, <laughs> that's what caught me up, because I'm like, like, Mr. are we really doing this for roles? Like, I can see if Let it was Let me like, be oh, real. There are seven, seven-year-olds that know what their no-no is. Right. You don't show your no-no to people because that's your private personal. And every parent has had that conversation with their child. So I'm not going to, if I would expect for my uh, my seven-year-old to be able to understand what are off-limit areas, bitch, I expect my adults to know what are off-limit areas. And bitch, if you were that thirsty for a part, you knew that it was low-key porn anyway. Okay. Right. So and what I, I are just, you really trying to do if you're masturbating on camera? I just think it speaks to the desire or the the thirst for fame and celebrity, and that people are people are willing to put themselves in compromising situations. Even now, Miss Thing, it could even be, been. Let me be real. Let me tell you why I find it problematic. Because in my mind, at a certain point, bitch, you know this is role play. <laughs> 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 You're not gonna sit here and tell me, Miss Thing. You really believe deep down in your pussy, Miss Thing, that this is gonna come out right. in Hollywood. This was gonna be the next Marvel movie, Miss Thing. Right. Like, you knew this was some skeezy shit. And like, we have to hold a grown people accountable, at least, if nothing else, for being able to look at a situation and analyze it right. with the same standard we expect. Bitch, that's stranger danger. Somebody you don't know on the internet that you've never seen before, that you've never met is asking you to expose yourself and do perform sex acts on camera. Not right. to mention the fact that there was also that whole like gainer part of it. So then she had the fetish of wanting these men to gain weight. And like they like I'm not laughing at the circumstances of these people's circumstances. No, she I don't sis, know, really, I don't, sis really worked them no. She, she really worked them worked. in the chaos <laughs> way. Okay. <laughs> Bitch, and I need y'all to know we got to be accountable for not being that fucking gullible, bitch. Right. Like, let, don't let them play on our vulnerability as a community, as LGBT folk. Don't let anyone play on your intelligence while they're playing on your need to want to survive, bitch. Still be a smart bitch while you're trying to get this money. Don't be stupid out here and not really fully, and, let, and then not really fully look at the full scope of what you're being asked to perform. Now, on the flip side of it, I applaud Miss RuPaul for knowing when to hold him and when to fold him, bitch. God bless the dead, Kenny Rogers, you know, amen. But he, she knew when to hold him and when to fold him in this scenario. But, because, bitch, you got to walk away from a hoe that's, con- that's cunning like that, girl. No, but man, it's no shade. Like, it's no shade on a side note. I wish she took, Miss RuPaul took that same approach to racism in the fandom and also in the show that she okay. took with this situation. Because I now, just... But, Let's unpack that. What role do you think RuPaul should play in addressing racism that does not necessarily have anything to do with her or anything she's trying to put out there? She's putting out a very diverse show with a very diverse cast and they have their race dynamic. But what role do you think she plays in addressing what the fandom does? She can just, it's as simple as making a statement that she she doesn't condone it. 
she does it. I'm not telling her to take up for specific individuals, but at some point with you as the face, now I, I'm not I'm not ignorant to the fact that there are other people, you know, behind the machine that are working. But you as the face and you as the black person fa- facing the show, like at some point you gotta take responsibility for the. It's just like Beyonce coming on and telling the Beehive, like, look, chill. It's not okay to be sending death threats. It's not oh, it's not oh, it's it's about setting the tone going forward. And I feel like. RuPaul I want to has apologize dropped. to the viewers really fast. I do not have corona. I'm coughing because it's allergy season. Oh, girl. Okay. No, but it's all, it's all about be, being responsible and setting the setting the tone. And I just feel like she drops the ball. And no shit, I get this feeling, and I can empathize with it. It her her thing is well. I pulled myself up by the bootstraps, and I made it. And no shade in the '90s. White folks were really the ones checking for her, and in black communities, people would disrespect RuPaul. So I could uh, I could only imagine how fierce they were on an interpersonal level. So I kind of get the mentality of why she feels like, um, oh, well, I I did it for myself, and I was black, and da 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 da. But it's just like with age and with wisdom, you would know that the that that black people treating you the way they did in the 90s is only a symptom of white supremacy and we can't hold that against the the black youth that are coming up under us that are also being crushed by that same system that oppressed you so i just think i just think as the face it's okay to set the tone just like you're doing um you're doing like little statements before the episodes come on before every episode, before everything associated with the season, you know that racism is um, a problem with the show to the point where Black queens have had to band together and create their own shows due to the, the, the persistent pervasive racism that they experience. So I just wish that her and the team they kept the same energy with the the racism that many queens mm. have talked about that they mm. had with this particular situation. So, mm-hmm. you know, and and so then it also makes you wonder if it only is an issue when it's a larger public issue as opposed to a real human issue. Does that mm. make sense? Like, what is the reason why you do what you do? But I, it, in acknowledging though that I I also can see the other side of it. So. I see how it would be very difficult for someone that is in the business of trying to recruit, trying to, trying to, trying to produce, trying to maintain, establish, trying to have a road show, trying to do the marketing and branding, trying to control her own brand while being married, while navigating. I could see how someone on that magnitude who probably does not even, and that's no shade, really manage their social media account just simply because they have a lot, so much to do. And they aren't really necessarily online looking at what people are saying and how things are maneuvering. And also you want to try to make sure that you are detached enough from your, the process where you can be objective, right? So then people don't feel like you are getting too involved in things that aren't necessarily related to the brand of the show. The fandom is an important part of the show and it affects how the queens navigate. And I do believe that the show maybe should be a little more specific in, in being intentional in making sure people understand we don't play that shit here. You know, maybe if that is said, that can maybe address the fandom in a more broad way. But I don't think RuPaul herself has necessarily the responsibility to be trying to defend each and every queen, trying to really get involved in the inner queen foolishness. Because at the end of the day, and this is just me being objective as a businesswoman, I can understand the need to allow the machine that you have created to run itself while you are helming the ship and trying to navigate building and expanding your brand and the machine and all of that. And so I do acknowledge, while I do acknowledge, there are some things that now, if you, now there's another conversation we're going to have in a minute about trans inclusiveness and I have a whole, and then, and I'm going to have a strong opinion, 
But as far as this is concerned, I kind of feel like at a certain point, if I were running this business, my first thought would be less is more. My first thought would be, let me, um, let me, uh, let me remove myself in a way, let me carry myself in a particular way where I could maneuver my business without getting caught up in the fray. Because when you're the big guy, you know, those are the people that people actually sue. Mm -hmm. So like at the end of the day, these people can battle a lot on the internet and it means nothing. As soon as RuPaul says one word or, or uses her influence in some way in a conversation, bitch, this other person now has a real case. So I respect the, her need to kind of like step back. And I don't want to necessarily like bash somebody for the fandom. I do think she should be maybe just be a little clearer of in addressing the fandom and maybe like one of the reunions on like, hey, I know my black girls in the world are having to go through these unique things. And I know that that just exists in general, honey, but you, we as a people got to do better. And what we won't tolerate is you know, and maybe that means having moderators on like, you know, the official boards and things, because it does, it does, it, if you put it out there as the head, people will follow. And so I think maybe she could do it that way, but I don't think she necessarily has a responsibility though. I, I, I'll, I'll disagree. I, I feel like, and now I'm, am I saying she needs to do it every year? No, but it's, but the point, the, the fact is she has not done it yet. So all it all it takes is one because the the fish stinks from the head to the tail. So yeah. she she sets the tone like you set the tone for everything. If you set the tone, everybody else will follow. And it's it's not saying her her personally being invested in black queens or make you know or you know just having her picks or her favorite of black queens. It's just setting the tone for the show. Hey. We recognize that we are, we this show does not operate in a silo. We are still connected to the various isms in the world, and I, as the face, as the representation of the show, hey, this is we we don't do that here. We everybody I, and is I respected. agree. Everybody so I don't think you respected. disagree, girl. I think I completely agree with that point. I think that needs to happen, and the fact that it shouldn't is the issue. But as far as it being like the responsibility of one person to like really be invested i don't think she should be deeply invested as a businesswoman i actually think it's smart to kind of uh, but she has to address it and that's where we we agree like right the yeah, fact it, that it hasn't be, been addressed it, needs to, addre it yeah. needs to be addressed because the the racism it it impacts the black like if you go look at the website right now for uh the the little show the the show that they have associated the the tour that they have associated with the show, um, it's like 10, 10 white queens and only one black queen. Mm. And then on social media, multiple white queens that have over a million followers, but the black queens that have been on a show and they have performed well on the show or gotten- And have been on multiple four, episodes of the show. That's true. Right, can barely bake. Done, yes break 500k and then you hear the stories of the black queens when they go to these conventions and stuff and how the white fandom like treats them in person or like it like that stuff translates to the real world so i just i just think that we can't we can't act like th this show happens in a vacuum and it's not impacted by all of these things and shout out to the vixen from season 10 because she really um shook the table Ooh. She really shook the table and broke the. Are you in wall. Chicago? Have you ever met her? Have you ever had the privilege of meeting her? No, I was I was supposed to go to um her Black Girl Magic show. She has Black Girl Magic. She has her own show, Black Girl Magic, that features like Black drag queens from RuPaul's Drag Race and local Chicago girls. But I met, it got canceled um last month because of Corona. So that is a fierce, beautiful Black queen. Oh, but and I think that they over sensationalized things that we all, the frustrations that we all have as black queer folk navigating in spaces. And I just want to just give her a shout out and say, bitch, I feel you and I overstand. Yeah, but I did see her. She had like a really, really, really big black girl magic show. I did go to that. I didn't get to meet her, but it was just all of the heavy hitter black girl. It was her, Monique Carr, Asia O'Hara, Monet Exchange, like all of the heavy hitter black girls from that season. Oh, Dita Ritz was on the show. Uh, Shea Coulee, Miss Thing. That mm. show was everything. <laughs> Bitch, it was Ooh. everything. Come on, shout out to the Vixen. Yes. 
Right. That sounds amazing. And now there's the, they have a new show that um, debuted in New York last month called Nubia that celebrates like the Black Queens. It's headed by um, Shea Coulee, Peppermint, B.B. Mm. Zahar Benet, The Vixen. Shout out to my sister Peppermint. Hey, yeah. girl, hey. And Bob the Drag Queen. And that they're trying to... Ooh, Bob hey, is, we, a comedic, is a comedic icon. And I've just... As a comedian myself, a natural comedian, I think his timing is impeccable. Right. It's no shit. I just love to see the um, oh, the Black I mean, queens come I together. I love to see the I, I just love to see the black girls come together and unify. And they were supposed to come to LA, but they had to cancel the show again due to Corona. But I just can't. We need as many black girl reviews as we can get, honey. Mm-hmm. So That's shout out to good. them. Shout out to them. Shout out, shout out to everyone, all of the black girls we love. Yes. And so transitioning into our next topic. Now, sis, now let me tell you, my sister, can I introduce this topic, sis? Because I, I just I got a really interesting way that you introduced me to this phenomenon. Okay. So my sister and I are uber close. And like she's in law school in Chicago. And like anytime that bitch can, she will come and visit me. And it is me and my husband's greatest delight to have this bitch because she is a peaceful spirit and we both are really laid back bitches and we don't do nothing. When I tell you, that's when you know you have a real friend because it don't require no stunts or no shows, bitch. Me and this girl can go to Kroger, do our shopping and be in the house and this thing and we can do a week together and it'd be like a retreat, like just a spiritual retreat, me and my sister. Anyway, when she comes, she always is interested in introducing me to a to culture and all kinds of shit. I'm not a real big TV watcher, and I'm not gonna lie and say I'm the the greatest, deepest, most technology girl. I do what I do well, but my sister is more exploratory and she's uh, just brilliant in general. So I learn from her. But anyway, when she comes, she introduces me to these things, and one of the things she introduced me to was chasing motherfucking Atlanta, bitch. And I want to give a shout out to the producers of that motherfucking shout, show. Because shout out to the Chasing Reality family. Shout out to y'all. The entire fandom and everyone affiliated. Because when I tell you, that is makes me so proud to see Black queer media advancing and promoting so many unique and varied looks at what it is to be a part of the Black diaspora and LGBTQ. When I tell you, from the way you show the different types of gay black men and how the diversity and the complexity even in how they show up in the world, from how you show their relationships with their families, the chasing family, I want y'all to know I appreciate each and every one of you for being so vulnerable and open because when I tell you my sister showed me that and at first I was like, girl, this is mess. But it is the most beautiful, best kind of mess ever because that is who we are as a people and it is a true and accurate snapshot of some of the shit we go through of course it's enhanced and there's storylines and bitch but i even live for the themes of it all bitch i live for all of the flaws because it's just it lets me know that my people are doing it and you feel the realness of it but anyway the reason why i wanted to give that introduce that topic sis is because it was so sickening and you really really taunted it by introducing me But I watch Chasing Atlanta primarily, and I'm really into that. She is trying to get me to watch Chasing Dallas, but I'm loyal to Atlanta, girl. But she told me that Dallas is so tea, and so she is going to lead this conversation. But, bitch, I wanted to introduce it because, girl, I wanted to acknowledge you first to have an amazing taste. But Miss Chasing Atlanta family, thank you. Thank you for that, that we need that. And we waiting for season four of Atlanta to come back, honey. I've been, I've been. Oh, waiting. I'm ready. I'm, I'm craving. I'm ready. Who's your favorite on Atlanta? Can we do Atlanta first, just because I can get in there? Okay. Bitch, who's um, your favorite on Atlanta? Then, okay, so my favorite is Sky. Um, I I have a couple. Okay. I have a favorite that I would like to like be friend with and be like kiki girlfriends with. And then I have a favorite that I just like to watch because they are good TV. So my favorite that I like that I would like to be girlfriends with in real life is Sky. I just feel like Sky Sky is no chaser. Sky is a real friend. Sky will read you. But uh Sky Sky's just a good friend. And from how he was depicted on the show, like He's just like a really loyal friend, has your back, 
it's very cool, calm, and chill until you try him. And I just, I love watching, I love watching Scott on TV. I just, I just really love watching him. He just has a very beautiful spirit. Who, who mm-hmm. I think, who, who is my favorite and who I live for their transition or their evolution on the show is, uh, what is her name? Miss, um, what is her name now? Um, I want to apologize Lauren. to our fans. I'm an ice cruncher, and I completely forgot I'm on Dan. I'm on a live. Miss, I'm on a podcast. Forgive me. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Miss Lauren England. I feel. I feel like yeah. she, she is the. She's like the Nene leaks of the show. It's like, she, like shade, like typical. Like when I watch her, I can tell that she was bullied as a child. I could tell like she was the one that was bullied for like being the queer kid. And now that they're an adult and they have these things, it's like, bitch, I'm fab and I'm gonna make you know it. And I just think she's great for TV. And she's she's an OG, she's been there all three seasons. So like, she's kind of like the centerpiece and she's the person that you can go at and you know it's going to be drama because she goes at, you know, she's had uh, rivalries with different cast members on the show. So I just like her for the, Ala- the she's like the staple of the Atlanta crew. Mm-hmm. Who are your favorites? Let me, let me just start out by saying I live for everybody because I live here. And y'all do my city right. And I just want to say it's every bit. Cause see, I'm an I'm an OG Atlanta girl. Um, I've been here since 2003. I'm a Backstreets bitch. For those of us that understand what that I, what I, what I meant when I said it, that's my coming out in my gay club life. So, but for those of us that are from Atlanta, I just said something just then, and you had to bend there to know what the fuck I'm talking about, baby. Listen. I'm a 708 girl, you understand? I want everybody to understand what I'm saying and understands what I'm saying. So I can speak for my experience since my years in this time, because I've been here since 03 and it's 2020. And I can say that I love the way that they are carrying the legacy of those that have come before them. These young folk on this show today, I really, really, I just, I just live for all of it, the mess of it all. Even every, every member and the way they are and the dynamic. I remember those arguments. I remember those fights. I remember boxing, bitch. I remember getting into it. I remember all of those things. But I'm gonna tell you who my favorite is, Miss Jalen. And let me tell you why. She, she's Lauren. She's Lauren England now. And let me tell you why I live for Miss Lauren in a special way. Because before the name, before I even knew anything about Chasing Atlanta, I was, I do community work here in Atlanta. I'm the executive director of TILT, which stands for Trans Individuals Living Their Truth. I've worked with a myriad of different organizations, and one of the organizations that I helped found is called Solutions Not Punishment Coalition. And I, they, there was a snap call meeting, is what we call it. And I remember it was held at the blue, it was held in East Point. And this beautiful being walked in the building and was just a lady and was so, and was, and had the, cause I'm from South Carolina, so I can respect a Southern bitch. And when I tell you, she gave me all the dignity and glory of a, just a, just a sweet Southern belle. And we, I remember we were, we were all around in the room and at the end when we were all after the meeting, we were talking and I remember I went over to her and I said, Hey, how you doing? I'm Tamaya. Cause you know, I'm very, I'm going to introduce myself to you. Cause again, I'm a country bitch and I, and, and I don't know how to do nothing else. I'm not fake like that. So bitch, I'm a, if you in the room with me, if I don't speak to you, it's cause, it's cause I did it on purpose. Cause I don't, I don't feature you. It's on purpose, bitch. Cause I'm, I'm the Duchess of protocol. So bitch, I'm going to speak. So I went over and spoke. And when I tell you the spirit that came off that, 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 that young lady was so beautiful to me. And we talked briefly and, and there were some things that we exchanged and it was just a very surface encounter. But in that moment, I remember saying, wow, she's really sweet. And what we talked about, I'm never going to share. And because it, it was very brief, but it was kind of in, very intense in that little moment. But I'll tell you what, when I saw her on the show, it was like, oh, now I get to see a little bit more of that, of that little spark I felt. 
And when I tell you I just love her and all that she is, and I understand what it is to be a businesswoman just trying to come up and do your thing. I understand what it is to have your haters. I understand when your haters have to be your motivators. I understand. And I just think that that is amazing to watch. And just watching that, that, that person bloom. And Lauren, I want to thank you for your representation on that show. I want to thank for all of the, of the girls on that show. I want to thank um, even the nemesis, bitch. When I tell you, and I, and I can also say this, you know, the, the young man, I forget, and I don't want to be shady because my- Who, Gardini? Bitch, I live for Miss Gardini, honey. And I just spoke to that bitch on a few occasions. So now this is two different experiences. Miss Gardini is everything you see on camera. That's who that bitch is in person. She is not pretending. That is not a game, all the way down to the garments, darling. She is fabulous, and she is a key. And but when I tell you we have, I always catch Gardini at pageants because um, my sister, my dear sister, um, Ebony Sherry, Toya Washington, you know, they have a, they have a relationship. And so Miss Thing, me and Miss Gardini have carried at my sister's table. And Gardini is a big supporter, and I love Gardini's spirit because he loves my sister, bitch. And anybody love my family, I love. So, see, I can look at things from multiple sides. I love Lauren and her walk because I can identify with her as a person. And I love Gardini because Gardini ain't never did me none. And Gardini loves my sister, Toya, my sister, Ebony, Ebony Sherry, and he is a big supporter of Leon Rouge, her brand. And so, God bless Gardini, honey. I don't have no beef with him neither. So, I will say both sides, bitch, I live for them. So, those are my two favorites. Now, who, now who don't you see on the show? Oh, and Oliver, I live for her. Okay. That's my, come on, gray hair, bitch. I live for you, girl. Miss Thing, now that's a bitch, me and her, because I'm a, you know, I'm a very loquacious bitch, and I also have an amazing vocabulary, and I also know how to dance, read, and throw shade, and I can do it with parenthetical citations, bitch. And I live for another bitch that I see that wields the sword well. And bitch, that hoe can read. And I live for her mouth and her mouthpiece and her carry and all of it. And I respect the hustle. I respect the, the multiple levels of the branding as a producer, as, a, as just a person. Like, I see the hustle and I can respect it. So Oliver, Gardini, and Lauren are my favorite. I really didn't care for Oliver. Now, I, I am rational enough to... I'm not biased enough to say that Oliver doesn't make great TV. I think he makes great TV. I just don't, I just think if I was to meet him in person, I just don't think I would get along with him. I just don't think our personalities would vibe. But I feel like he does make great TV because he he burnt, he definitely brought it um, his first season on. And also, um, I don't know, I, I can't really say it's anybody that I dislike or shouldn't be on a show. I feel like each season, everybody, it, you know, adds something to the pot. So I just feel like every every cast is they add something to the pot. I definitely live for the trans representation. Shout out to T S Lil Kendra. Shout out yes. to Berlin. I love your we music, bitch. Yeah, shout out I to love Berlin. Your music. Um to Berlin of We Were Born. I love Berlin Berlin. Um I just I just I don't know. I just I don't know. I just really love I just really love the show and I just really love how they are protective of the girls and the image that they put out there on the girl. I mean, is it messy sometimes? Yeah, but it's a reality show. But as far as the representation, just from different interviews I've seen from the producers, they're, they are very conscious of the image that they're putting out of the trans women on the show. And with the, tra the trans women they have on the, sh on the show, it's like, you know, they're in drama, but they also have dreams and goals and they're working towards them. And, they, you know, hold on, hold on, hold on. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge. What's the girl? And she has her best sorry, sorry, sorry. My headphones disconnected. Don't edit that out because that's cute, but my headphones disconnected. Okay. Okay, cute. So, what's the young lady that has, like, is a part of a music group with the That's Berlin. Band? Now, let me tell you, I now that's the one girl, her and I will say Kendra, I don't think they give them their just due. Um, in the sense that I think they need more camera time. That's my only critique. I feel like they let Miss Kendra down. I feel like they had an opportunity to really build on her story, even after. But she, she got locked up, though. No, 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 no. That's what I'm trying to notice. I said even after she got locked up. I just feel like 
everybody that it, particularly when people have been never vulnerable with your life and particularly because she wanted the girls and that representation is just so raggedy sometimes and even even though i feel like the other cast members didn't intend to i feel like it was a bit too much of a like low-key shade and key about the fact that this trans woman is in jail and yes y'all can judge the reason why she was there but i know the strategies of survival and I'm a bitch that's been homeless. I'm a bitch that I've been through it all. And I'm going to say, Miss Kendra, bitch, I live for you. And I'm, I am I wish that you got a little more showtime on this show. And I think they could have handled you just with a little more grace. And, oh, um, Berlin, bitch, I live for you. And I feel like your story has yet to be told. And I'm not going to just blame that on production. I feel like, sis, my critique for you, maybe you need to, like, really really showcase your personality beyond your friend he is amazing and i don't that's not and i can see i'm a bitch that lives for friendship and i live for genuine people so that's not throwing shade to your friend but i don't really get to know your personality and as another trans woman looking for representations of myself in the media on tv on the internet bitch i live for you and i want to know more but it's like i'm not really getting it because they really are only showing you with him so i'm gonna critique them for that but also, bitch, like, give me more. Yeah, that was my only thing with Berlin. I felt like because Jay Twan, Jay Twan is, I, Jay Twan, I love him. I live for how he protects Berlin and he goes up I for Berlin. Berlin. I live for when um, gay, black gay men protect trans women, black trans women, I live for it. But Jay Twan is intense. So his energy naturally just overtook hers. So I just hope... And that's not shade to him. He just has a very... He's a very... uh, No shade. That boy has a light about him now. No, He has a light. And and it's not even... And and, and, and I'm going to say this, as this is me as being a very educated, both of us being educated, articulate bitch. She's not the most articulate girl. Not at all. But Mm -hmm. when I tell you... There's something about that little baby. I live for her. I live for the energy, the vibes, the con- like. Again, I love also Southern people, and I could feel that in her too. Because I live for her. Yeah, and I live for the fact that they were homeless together, and then they really, you know, they stayed together. And yeah, I, I just, believe in those kind of relationships. I've had that in my life, and it's been a blessing. So yeah, I've supported. Yeah, and so I love hope- him. I hope, I know things ended on a sour note with them, but I hope y'all bring them back on for season four because that that's just my only critique of the show. I feel like sometimes I I can tell just as a viewer, sometimes the relationship between production and the, there aren't clear lines between production and cast member. So when cast members feel some type of way, Things are taken personal, and I kind of mm-hmm. feel like decisions are t- made too prematurely to kick mm-hmm. certain people off. And I really feel like to have longevity, you have to bring people back on from season to season so we can see the evolution of different storylines and see okay, how can they. Okay, I tell you what's my eye candy on the show? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I just want to say, like, so I just really hope you bring, if they're still in Atlanta, because I don't know if they, I think they moved back to, they may have moved back to New York, but just, you know, after the reunion, it gets a little tense, but don't be so quick to just write people off. You have to bring them back on, because, like, people get comfortable with them, and they just want to see how things grow, and things change, and alliances shift, and so I just really hope that they come back on for season four, but um, go ahead work um thank you sis and i'm sorry if if i get if i ever bump against you girl you know even i want people to know that i'm a gracious bitch too i'm sorry girl you know but um you forgive me no 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 it's fine okay okay um but no um 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 back to what i was about to say about um um the What's Miss Thickum's name? It's a girl on the show, and she actually got into a, a, a physical altercation with, I believe it was Jalen, but it's the light-skinned girl with the body. I, and I say girl because I'm, I'm of community, and that's not, but he's, it's a boy. But you talking about Montel? With, with the body? With, with the, the butt? With, with the Thickum? With, with the, the butt? butt and the hips. With, with, yeah, that's in Montel. In a special way. In a special way, in a special way, in a special way, bitch, I live for you. Like, no shame. Now, that's the, and I added everybody in the show, her and Oliver, but particularly her, 
I mean, him, because, you know, again, I'm a trans, black trans woman, been in Atlanta for a long time. I don't mean no harm. But him, him, uh, my, what's his name? Montel, yeah. Montel. This thing, if I ever see you in the street, I'm going to hug on your neck. Because everything about you is sickening to me. And I feel like I've seen you before. I'm a girl that's been here. I feel like we've been in the same space. But your everything about you is amazing. And low-key, low-key. I just Even from the way you just read a room, bitch, I see you. And I acknowledge your glory, girl. Because I live. I live for that young, my Montreal, I live for him. I do. I do. I do. So shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. I'm bad with names because, you know, I'm, I'm getting older in life, but but I live for your, every time I see you on screen, I never leave my eyes off of you, your fashions, the way you carry yourself, boss bitch, yes ma'am, I live, but yeah. I, I also, I also, I also love Q, I feel, I feel like Q was very oh, Is Q the fine one? Is that my eye candy? That's the chocolate one with the boy head? Listen. I live here in this city, so I got to be careful what I say because I don't know who know who and I don't want no shit because I don't want nobody. Bitch, I'm married and life is amazing. However, that's a snack and a half and he knows how to fill out a pair of pants. You understand me? You keep them pants just as fitted as they are. You don't loosen them up none. Matter of fact, I live for it. You know, now in real life, it's a whole porno movie when you walk in the room sometimes, but bitch, I live to see him walk and come and go. because Bitch, I love it all. He's an like that's a very attractive black man. Like when I think of like the prototype, you know, of like what I would think of as like a a, a true African warrior type of nigga. That nigga is fine, gay or not. That's an attractive black man. You can't deny that. That's a fine. No, no he was extremely attractive, and he's extremely hardworking and a hustler. So, no. shout out, shout out to Q. So let's transition into Chase and Dallas. Have you have you gotten into Chase and Dallas? Not only have I not gotten into it since oh. I no 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 <laughs> we just talked about it yesterday, girl. Like <laughs> so to the viewers, it's not that I'm throwing shade to Dallas. I just am so brand loyal that it's like I don't I'm one of them girls I've been using the same toothpaste since I've been using toothpaste. Like I don't play like I'm very brand loyal. I I'm very brand loyal at so. <clears throat> I kind of came into it one way, but because you vouched for me the last time, I'm going to get into it. But you said just start with the second season because they replaced a lot of folk. Yeah, just start. Yeah, just start from season two. Just start from season two. Because they just. Was the first them. season people not interested? Like, was that not a good season? No, the first season was a good season, but it was, you can tell like it was like the, the testing season. So there were some sound issues and you. you it wasn't as it this first season of Dallas wasn't as polished as this season is. And the um the uh, if you do watch anything from season one, I would just advise you to watch the reunion the season one reunion. But um season one, it just it just like it was cute that they were in another city, but it just wasn't as polished and the the storylines really weren't that flushed out. And in my opinion, um Season two of Chasing Dallas is like light years better than the first season. Oh, okay. Well, I'm like I said, if it's the same production company, then I live for their product. Yeah, it's it's st it's still chasing reality, but um, it's headed by Reese G. Shout out to Reese G. Um, and Reese G. I'm also gonna advocate real fast for Maddie to do more reunions. L and let me tell you why I live for Maddie. Let me tell you why I live for her doing the reunions. One, I feel like she has the kind of gravitas and she knows how to carry. And I love, believe it or not, no shade. She's actually really good in that role because she's very direct and she don't give a fuck. And, I, and when people try to get crazy, I love how she'll like let you know, like, bitch, hold on. I'm from Miami too, bitch. Let's not do it. Like, no, so they, I, they, say, they say they can't get her because her, her price has risen up. So, you know. Oh, well, yeah. shout out to her. Well, I, let me tell you something. I'm still going to advocate for a black trans woman to get her coin. Y'all need to come up with some more money for, to get Maddie back. I feel like you can pay what she worth. Her booking is worth it. She worth it. That yeah. bitch is worth it. She is. No shade. Because that, that reunion be tea with her. Her personality is really, really good in that contest because she don't give a fuck. And she's going to ask what she want to ask. Right. Hey, Amen. So, mm -hmm. No, but um, Chase and Dale season two, I have enjoyed the. It premiered like New Year, like the first week of New Year's. So it's just, they're still in. The, they're like towards the tail end of their season. It's just a 
great production, great value. Again, showcasing us um, being who we are, not trying to be a typecast. We are just being us, doing us, trying to get to the money, trying to be creatives and do our business. And it's just a lot of that. And they also have a trans woman on Jason Dallas. Shout out to Ariel O'Hara. Who is the, um, O'Hara? So should I? Is, what's her personality like? Okay, she doesn't have the the best. She's not really in a lot of drama. I kind of wish she would give more, but it's her first season. But her storyline really centered around um, what's the name of that girl that was murdered? Um, mm-hmm. The girl that was murdered in Dallas, mm-hmm. um, Malaysia Booker. So her yeah, storyline really She's a friend cent- of Malaysia. Right. I think Malaysia was her niece. So her storyline really centered on that. Well, so shout she out had, to her. I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah, she had an episode. And then T.S. Madison was on an episode because she designs gowns and she's um, T.S. Madison's designer now. So, wow. um, yeah. Well, so, she's been design- well, T.S. Madison dressed lovely. So, bitch, if she been designing her clothes, I need to know her number too. Not just the, not the crib sis style, but bitch. I can appreciate that kind of talent because we got we to gotta share that love. And she's and a trans she, woman, you say? Yeah, she's a trans woman. And then, like, a lot of the black, a lot of the black girls and the Texas girls that have been on RuPaul's Drag Race, she's designed a lot of that stuff. Oh. Wow. Yeah, so she's designed for, like, Kennedy Davenport, Alyssa Edwards, Raja O'Hara, and, like, uh, um, other girls that have been on the show that are in the, that come from the Dallas area. And now, I'm going to say Kennedy Davenport. Now, yeah. That's a sweet bitch, too. I met her in person. She was at, she was booked to do a speaking. She was booked to perform. And, you know, that bitch did not. Let me tell you something. Now, that's a bitch you want to book. Kennedy Davenport, if you want to book somebody that's going to really give you real old school, good old deep down drag and can dance and can entertain and MC, book her because I, she was... She was emceeing a pageant, or I think she was, I don't know what, but let me tell you something. She not only do she work the room, she was working the lobby. Miss Thing is fierce. And we and her had a good conversation, and I just want to give her that shout out. And um, we had a one-on-one, I was able to have a good conversation. See, what I love is when I see you on TV, and now let me tell you the real gag with her. I didn't even see her in, on TV. and I met her before I knew who she was. And so she... But, but when I tell you, me and that hoe had a good key and a cackle, and she was really just, like, just naturally just a nice person. And when you people are genuinely nice people, I like to acknowledge that, because we don't give enough credit. And our community in general, the assumption is, is when you get a little bit of fame or a little bit of attention, that you're not good people. You know who else is sweet? Trinity Bonet. That's my niece. That's Toya's daughter. Shout out to Trinity. But anyway, yeah, go ahead, girl. No, no, no. I love the Kennedy and secretly, well, she's my winner for All-Star Season 3, but that's a, that's another topic, but um, Ooh, say that thing. But, um, no, I, I live for all of them, but, no, Chasing Dallas is, is, the, is great. My, of course, my favorite on Chasing Dallas is um, King Kane. King Kane is, is so sweet, but he is so he is so sh- I mean, he can be so shady, but I love King Kane. King Kane is King Kane is an OG. King Kane was on the first season, and he has been bringing it. Um, he letting the girls have it. I also like Reese G. Reese G. is an executive producer and a cast member, which causes a lot of conflict with people on the cast. But I live for Reese G. is a business person, and as a business person myself. And as somebody that's real professional, I I love I like the tenacity and I like the drive and just seeing his passion for Chasing Dallas and how it has evolved. And is he like a business person, like the way Q is? And I and um and so in the, in the, so Reese G lived. He's from Atlanta and he was like a stylist in Atlanta. And then he moved oh. to Dallas. And he um he so he has a production company that produces Chasing Dallas along with Chasing oh. Reality. And then he just released a book called Um Networking Honey. And he's and, choosing to be behind the camera or come from behind the camera and be in front now? No, he was already in he was already in front of the camera and behind the camera. Oh, no. And he's trying to evolve to like not become a like to just be behind the scenes. But I think 
the, as a viewer, I'm too used to seeing him on the show and he's like an OG cast member. So I'm going to want to see him as the seasons go on. Cause now, like now you're, uh, yeah. yeah, you're a personality. So I'm expecting, because you add an energy. So if you just step away, it's just going to feel weird. But I kind of get what he says, because he says it's hard to do both. And he's very protective of the trans community. He's very, like, he's very, you know, aware, and he knows what's going on, and he's really close to the girl. So I, I just love chasing that. I just, I just, I love the representation. And I love the fact that we are not waiting for mainstream to give us opportunities. We are creating yes. our own opportunities. I just, I, and I love to, I, especially with black queer people, because especially the black mainstream, they shit on us so much and they take, they take, 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 take so much from us. They don't give us credit. And it's just great to see us creating our own things and platforms, creating yeah. stuff that's on level that could be on TV. But I'm happy mm-hmm. that it's on YouTube, so. Mm-hmm. And I want to um, acknowledge, even just in general, the black the black talent that is Issa Rae, because I feel like she's paved the pathway for now for people to look at blackness in a different way and, and look at internet content in a different way. Right. And I feel like low-key, like now we all can kind of look at a new route to success that does not require that you work for uh, one of these big production companies and grow up through the ranks. Like you can be a black creative and navigate a unique path. So I want to give her that shout out. Cause that, at least for me, that's my possibility model as a black woman. But um, um, to your point on chasing Atlanta sis, let me tell you something. I am going to get into this show because you have more than enough sold it. And also let me say this. I want to piggyback on something you just said I just want to just give a shout out to just the glory that is the fact that you told me about this one, the fact that there is the fact, well, let me say this one, the fact that this content is out there and that it impacted us in a way we're not being paid. We're not being sponsored. We have never, other than the, 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 connections that we already talked about, we haven't even really ever been around these people ever in our life. What is amazing is, is that they put out a content that has struck us in a special way that we want to take time on our platform to support that type of content in the media. And I just want to say, I want, I want I, the critiques and all the things we said are in love. And those people that we didn't mention, it's not that we don't dislike you, but I want to say that Chasing Dallas sounds like it's going to be a good follow-up to Chasing Atlanta and a good little guilty pleasure for me because I just love seeing representations and I think this is being done, even if it's not done perfectly, even if it's not the best in the world, I love seeing the evolution of my people and I love seeing the their gifts manifest and these characters develop and even watching these people grow like Jalen turning into Lauren like just that that journey of watching this being that I had this one brief encounter with and just seeing how just in general even though I know that that's an edited version of a person just watching the tenacity just just to to know that at the end of the day I can walk in a room and know that nobody sees it for me and still yet still I rise and yet feel like air I rise. This thing I live for her. And so you just I just want to thank you for introducing me to this series. And before we move on, I just want to give you that props, sis, because that's tea to me. Shout thank out to you. Jason Atlanta, and I will be watching Dallas. And shout out to the other um, LGBT reality shows doing their thing. Shout out to the Come Up Elena, the Come Up New York. Shout out to uh, the Circle NYC. Hey, Nunu. And shout out to uh, G Status ATL Hustle. Y'all are trying it with the second season. Y'all need, I don't know what's going on, but y'all need to, like, the girls have literally been waiting since like last October. Y'all are trying it. But shout this out to a- y'all. I know we didn't discuss it in the production meeting, but I have a really quick question. What do you think about the show on, I saw a, well, I saw a clip on YouTube and I, well, first I saw a commercial and then I saw a clip on YouTube on Vice for a show involving black trans women. And it looks like they're having like conversations in lingerie. Have you seen that show? I think it's something about the house or something about a house. Are you talking about my house? 
Is it that what it is? Oh, it that was uh, no. That was I know what you're talking about. From that was from. Uh, so there was a show on um, Vice called My House, and it um, documented the ballroom scene now. And that particular scene you were talking about in that episode, the trans woman had like a party for themselves, and they all came oh. dressed in sexy lingerie. You know what? Say no more, girl. We can move on. I, okay. Out of context, out of context, I completely didn't understand what that was going on. And that's yeah. why I asked for clarity. Yeah, girl. Okay. So shout out to my sisters. I appreciate y'all having a conversation. It makes sense now. We can move on. We were going to talk about the Black trans representation. So while we appreciate chasing Atlanta, right? Like we know that we exist in a world where the representations of us are, are happening. Now see, now this is the sickening part about it, sis we now have the ability to, to critique our, the way the world sees us when one time they didn't see us at all. But shout out to Amaya, shout out to the girls that have had to, that, that, that are playing roles on television now in polls and other shows like Sydney and different other people. Shout out to everybody that's actually out there showing representatives because we don't want to shit on the fact that it is amazing that there's so many diverse representatives. But we also want to acknowledge that the representatives that are out there that are out there now don't fully represent everybody. So since you were going to bring in this, and I think you had a really good point, go ahead and share that with the audience. I think the, the conversation, like, on one end, the reason that I know for me, the I love the LGBT, the Black LGBT content that I see is even throughout the mess, there seems to be like a care, particularly for Black trans women, that I have not seen from like the more mainstream reality shows on VH1, for instance, Your Love and Hip Hop, Your Real Housewives of Atlanta or just in any the future, girl I want to forget sound effects go ahead I'm sorry because that was a <laughs> hand round of applause I, I feel like the whenever there's like a trans character on like the love and hip hops or when they were trying to bring Amaya on to Real Housewives of Atlanta it's not groundbreaking because a lot of times with these shows that are urban shows that are pitched to Black people or that are shown to Black people, it's like trans women are pigeonholed into these stock characters or these stock representations. So what could be a, a groundbreaking moment or a moment to really push the needle forward or move the culture forward, it, it, usually, it usually turns into it being like some type of comical moment or it's just not as impactful as it could have been because you had people trying to play into tropes or trying to uh trying to promote stereotypes and more often than not it's just not effective it's not impactful and minds are not changed the the the, the audience their minds and their hearts are not changed to trans people specifically Black trans women that exist in their in in the black community, and we us all coexisting together. So, Ooh. so like Sweet. what? So, so what are your thoughts? Um, and and before and before we get into this conversation, I don't I don't want to particularly drag anyone. I I I want to handle my trans community, especially my trans woman, with care in love Ooh. so this is not to drag anybody this is not to embarrass anybody this is not to shit on anybody but i think we and because nobody's really checking for black trans women about how we feel about our representation in the media i think it's past time that we really sit down and take the time to really discuss what they're doing and how it impacts us with what mm -hmm. they're doing because nobody really cares to hear our side of the perspective. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Like why hearing our perspective is important, Brianna? It is so important because we are, the, we black trans women are ultimately the ones that will be impacted by the representation. So if somebody has never met a trans woman before or they, they they've never interacted with a trans woman before and they see the show and they see a show where a woman is 
rapping, talking about her penis, it's mm-hmm. easy for them to think that we all are like that, or we all we all have penises, or we all want to talk about our penises, or it's harder for you to ask those type of in, um, invasive questions for every Black trans person that you come across. So it's mm-hmm. so we have to be. Again, when you run a platform and you have a platform that really influences the culture or, ha- you know, is ingrained in the culture, you do have a responsibility for the type of um, images and stories that you put out there. And I understand that, you know, we're, it's supposed to be entertainment and we're supposed to be making a show, but these stories and these narratives they impact real people that are just navigating live and trying to survive and trying to have positive interactions with people and not be harmed by perceptions and stereotypes that are perpetuated about black trans women. Mm-hmm. And you know what, sis? And, and so then I think too, an important thing to do in this conversation is to acknowledge, right? Like the stereotypes okay so then i think it's important when we have this conversation to acknowledge that like there are stereotypes that exist about every group of people so i'm not sitting here trying to play victim like we are some unique specific people where people we're being attacked in a way that no one else is no 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 and and i'm also aware that stereotypes are often sometimes there's some accuracy in them. So I'm not going to say that every stereotype about trans folk doesn't actually exist. Because what we do understand is just, just that just like how they say black people like watermelon and eat fried chicken and we love both and it is motherfucking true. Well, actually, now, I don't really like watermelon, just to put that out there. By and large. <laughs> Never liked it, but it, but back, back to the topic. You are an out. Are, are, do you don't you believe though that you're an outlier? <laughs> I mean, just just looking at the community you come from. Yes, but I that agree. doesn't mean that we. That's all we are. But sometimes they promote and they turn up the stereotypes in a extreme way for comedic value. Sometimes for a minstrel type of behavior, like they really want a mocking kind of. They want to play up. Like how sometimes when, sometimes back in the day when black actors and actresses who are educated and articulate would show up to do black roles and they would be told from the casting directors and from the people that are in the audition room, they're being told, do it blacker, do it more black. And it's like, I am black. What do you mean? And it's like, no, 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 no. We want you to do it more black. You know, we know that Black is a complex and nuanced and beautiful mosaic that we all are a part of and we all bring our uniqueness to it. So you can never say under the under the beautiful terminology of the word Black that we are all the same. But there are stereotypes that other races that that aren't us, particularly those that want to use us and commodify our image and likeness, there are stereotypes that they will pull out they will they will ask actors and actresses and they will encourage and spend money to put on plays and movies that 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 put up forward a certain set of stereotypes and that is problematic and we're seeing changes in that evolve over time however problem is is that when you're black and you're trans a lot of people are that a lot of the ideas and the way that they edit trans women because i'm not saying that's all those who those girls are but the way they edit them for television, the way that they are cast, and the way that they are even probably encouraged to behave is, is, is an enhanced version that is just showing stereotypes. And I feel like what we need to acknowledge is that some of the things you see on television are real, but some of the things you see on television are enhanced reality. And just because you see these limited examples of trans folk on television and your media, on your YouTube, doesn't mean you're seeing all of it. Even adding us into the fray, you're not seeing all the diversity that is trans, that is black trans. 
So I want to put into the space, we need to talk about stereotypes because I feel like part of the problem is, is that when we, when we, when we address this, we're addressing people. We're saying, oh, this person is behaving in this way and I don't like it because she's on this show and she's doing this. Or we say this person is on this platform and she was this person and she used to do porn and this and that. And it's all judgment at the end of the day. But the reality of it is, is that these nuanced, beautiful human beings are being pigeonholed into, and, the, and the information that's coming out of them, coming out about them is a silo. And they're only letting certain things be known in the world. Meanwhile, these people are doing great big things that aren't being showcased or discussed because we want to, you know, in the world, when we think about people and races, we, a lot of times we think about stereotypes and they want to promote that because that sells business and that sells money. But the reality of it is, we need to know that when you're talking about black trans folk, we are deep and nuanced. And that's why we, you and me, Brianna, we came into this space because, listen, ma'am, we needed to show some different examples, some more broad examples to add to the space that there are some of us that come up in community, that have done community work. There are some of us that went to law school and are now the attorneys. There are some of us that are now teachers and educators. We operate on different levels. There are different diversity, even within this. It's not just what you see on TV. Right. Yes, yes, yes. So you said you wanted me to speak to some of the stereotypes? Yes, sis. What are some of the stereotypes? Because the reason why I asked Brianna to, to, to speak to this is because I think that Brianna has a very clear way of articulating things, I think, in a very like direct way that people can receive and so uh, i love that you are that person for me sis because i speak in a very very in a way that i think is emotionally impactful for people but you really really are good at breaking it down brass tacks so can you just explain about the stereotypes for everybody um so just to go off of examples there was a there was a a black trans woman that was featured on a season of love and hip-hop new york so just some of the stereotypes that i could pull from her um pull from her appearance on the show the the main one that really sticks out for me is that like trans trans women need like need help or need to be pulled up by cis women like trans trans like mm-hmm. it's like trans women are just these Jezebels that have no direction and it takes this like this cis this cis woman to like pull them up by the bootstraps and show them how to be a woman in order for them to be um accepted. Like that was one that really stuck out to me and kind of like concerned me during her time on there. Uh mm-hmm. Another one, um, it was, it was, they kind of really pushing the stereotype of all trans women like need or want to have um, gender confirmation surgery. Cause it, cause Mm -hmm. it was, it was such a, it was such a fixation on her genitalia and her having a penis that, that was kind of in, in my opinion, it kind of was not like it was like what was the point? Like what mm-hmm. like what was the point of this? Like nobody was dating her on a show. Nobody was. It was her whole storyline was to try to become an artist. So mm-hmm. why are we having conversations about her genitalia? And then there exactly. was so that that was another that was another stereotype. Um, that we all want, we all want, sur- we all want gender confirmation surgery, or we're all overly fixated on surgery. Um, now, on to that point, I think that needs to be a breakout, sis. What do you think? I think that's a whole separate conversation, and I yes. would love. That we we can definitely that. circle back to that on a right. conversation. But, but anyway, that, girl, what were you saying? So, it was the whole like trans like tra- um trans women need like an escort into society the whole genital right. the, the genitalia stereotype also the stereotype that we aren't talented or like 
because the person really couldn't rap, really didn't want to be a rapper. And it's like, no, bitch, there actually are talented as fuck black trans women rappers and singers that are doing it, that are out here. And it's just like, y'all are really kind of making a mockery of people that really do this. Putting it into the space. Um, right, Aeon that, and the Lioness both sing. And I also, but I want to put it into the space that I, I if you really want to use me, I'm available. You can tell by my voice I can carry. Let me know. No, <laughs> no, but it's just, so that that was another stereotype. And overall, like the biggest stereotype is like them promoting, like them indirectly promoting that we are deceiving, we're deceivers or we're tricksters or we're trying to like trick people about our identity and we're trying to infiltrate all of the, because like, there was there was a season of Love and Hip Hop where they had a trans person, and then they were the season of um, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta where they had a trans person, and like wow. their whole their whole introduction into the show is like they get really close to like a cis person on the cast, and it's just like I have a secret to tell you. Oh, and, the messy sidekick. Right. It's like I have I have a secret to tell you. Or I just it's just I've been holding on to this and I'm and I'm like, for people that are really friends with trans folks, it's not like my sis friends, we don't it's not a well girl, we're friends and I, I just had this big secret to tell you, like, sis, I'm really trans and I hope you still like that's not reality, at least for me. Like, cis people that I'm close to, I don't have to have this big announcement that I'm trans. But if we're close enough, me being trans will come up in conversation. Because if you're that close to me, we'll have this relationship where I will share with you different parts of my life where me being trans impacts those parts of my life. And it just kind of seems like that, like that whole, like, cis people are just obsessed with trans people, like, disclose like when are you going to tell who are you going to tell it how are you going to tell it and that's really not that's not how disclosure really works in the real world especially with trans folks that are trying to navigate safety and economic security and their gender identity at the same time so those like those are the three main things that stick out to me what are what are some of the tropes that stick out to you um one of the tropes that sticks out to me sometimes is the idea, like what you were saying, the idea that we aren't fully formed individuals when we show up into a space, right? Right. So then uh, let's keep it real. When we show up to spaces, a lot of times we've gone through a lot. If you, when you, by the time you see a trans woman, particularly if she is someone that is has done this for quite a while. You're looking at someone that has invested a lot of time, a lot of spiritual energy. She's gone through a lot. She's overcome a lot. She's had to navigate. And particularly if she's attained a level of beauty and, and, and is, is what we consider societal beauty and she's fought to get on a television show, this ain't just no average woman. This ain't just no average woman in general. So what was what's what sometimes is dehumanizing and sometimes infantilizing and, and sometimes is patronizing to us is the narrative that somehow because you know something about my medical history and my genitalia, that I am somehow incomplete as a human being. And that only you can help me find how to be really centered in myself. And the idea that some surgery. Because at the end of the day, no one will know after I've had the surgery whether or not I've had it unless I'm talking about it, right? And who's talking up under my dress on a regular basis? And if you are having those conversations, you should reevaluate boundaries, in my opinion. But my point is, <laughs> to respectfully digress, my point is, is you need to remember that when uh, sometimes when I, when I see on these shows, when, when, when cis folk are processing our experience they process it through the physical part because that's the part that they can see not realizing that we're fully formed spiritual beings that often have had to overcome a lot to be who we are so we are spiritual beings that are also tried and true we are we sparkle like diamonds because we've undergone a lot of pressure over a lot of time 
And I think we that's underestimated. So when we show up in the space, you see this woman and you think, oh, she's trans, bless her heart. Right. And that's the natural that gets put out there that we these victims that uh, don't you wish you were a real girl too. It, it's kind it's kind of like it's ca- kind of like mirror wearing like a white savior complex in media where like the white like so like cis people are like the white people that have to come in and save this save the downtrodden and down and out black people mm-hmm. kind of how like cis it's like Oh, let me come and save you and indoctrinate you into the binary so you can do these womanly ways. And it's like, sis, I've been out here surviving. Like I'm like I'm here. Like, what are you talking about? I need to <laughs> right. I need to dress a certain like in the New York one, it was they like had a whole intervention because they didn't like the way that she dressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like the idea, you know, then that, and, and, and now, now mind you, let, let, let's process this, right? This woman has gone through obvious physical transformation to the point where she has had to fundraise and, and, and actually go through a process that required that she invest in a lot of medical care. She may or may not have undergone different surgeries to be who she is. And you mean to tell me you think that this woman doesn't know who she's trying, what she's trying to do? You think she does, she's not aware of the image that she's trying to put out there? Like the fact that even if you disagree with it, maybe that it could have been handled in a different way where you're talking more about how to better improve your brand. But it comes off sometimes the way they talk to, um, and, 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 and I want to use speak her name in this moment to give her the shine, Sydney Starr. Right. I think that right. the way that they talk about my sister Sydney and them, it, it, it's patronizing. It is very much like she's not a fully formed human being. Now, I don't necessarily even, and this is speaking to Sister Sydney. I don't necessarily, I think that she could, because that bitch mug sits and her body is over and her countenance is beautiful. And I think that if she just covered up just a smidge of digit, and this is my, this is me import, uh, enforcing my downside respectability politics, and you can say fuck me if you feel it, girl. But I think that your anointing makes room for you regardless of what you have on. And that if you only covered up just a little bit, bitch, your mug leaves men to desire what else is there. You don't have to do much. You're not an ugly girl. So for me, that's my only critique of her, but that's not my, I'm just giving that as a fan because she on TV, but I just don't like the way they handle her. They could handle that conversation in a way that doesn't make it seem like you're not a real girl. You need to listen to the real girls because they can help you be a better bitch because you right now are ratchet and nothing. And, 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 and sometimes she plays into that, I think, in a way that I think is unhealthy by some of the behavior she engages on the show. But I know that's editing, so I'm not stupid enough to believe that that's just who she really is. I, however, I just want to say from what I see, I think she could dig a little deeper to she's seen in a better way herself, advocate for herself. And I just think the harmful thing about it is these shows have these trans people who are already in a vulnerable situation being the only trans person on the show come on here, do the most, not really give them anything to humanize them or give them some type of storyline. And then after the season is done, we don't hear anything else for them. So it was like, what like what did you really get out of this out of this on the back end? Especially now as you're trying to diversify your image or take your career to the next level when this show should have been the opportunity or the vehicle to do that. And in both of in both of the uh, the Atlanta and the New York one, the trans people were only on there for one season. So like what like what is the what is the point in trying to tout yourself as Oh, we're di- we're gender diverse, and we you know we have all of these groundbreaking storylines. If you're really not committed to uh, evolving and cultivating them past once the- past what you need them for to just get the ratings in the meantime, so it just really makes me question the intention, the intent behind um, these shows trying to capitalize off the transgender conversation. Right. Right. 
So yes, girl, I think that's important for us to acknowledge. And I wanted to have, and, I, and, I, and I'm glad that we have in this conversation because I think people really need to understand, like there's a way that we can all coexist and eat in the same ecosystem because there's enough food to eat out there because the bottom line is this trans is beautiful and the world just is figuring it out. And why they figuring it out, bitch? We are gonna make sure that we do not shit on nobody else parade and that we love on one another. And I'm just blessed to exist in a world where I can talk about all the different trans media and content that is out there that is impacting the world and enriching the texture of society because we make things more beautiful. And I just wanna put that into the space that nothing that we say on this podcast is a critique of anyone's womanhood or them as individuals. It's more of us talking about the systems of oppression that sometimes can exploit us in different ways. So to move on to the next topic, sis, now we were talking about these unemployed folks right now. And we were talking about how like it shifted things. And sis, maybe you can chime in because I know I've been talking a minute. Maybe you can chime in. We were talking about how like during this time, everybody's in like this state of emergency and there's issues. And we were saying that people are having to do what they have to do. Do you want to add more on to that? So I think I think the the heart of this conversation is that tra- trans folks are doing what they have always had to do to survive. So I think this is this is a conversation about trans women engaging in sex work and especially during this time and people and them being shamed for engaging in sex work either via the internet or them having so work the strong and be outside. And it, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I feel you a thousand percent. Can I, is it okay in this moment? Because I know we are trans-centered because we're trans individuals, but I want to expand that out deeper. I think we need to not, I think that while we social distancing is important and we want to emphasize the need and the speci- the need and the importance in this time of us adhering to these, because we are losing people. All of us know somebody that, or if we don't have a loved one ourselves, we know somebody that's lost somebody, or we, might, we ourselves are even dealing with it in this moment. And we want to acknowledge this is not a game or a test. So nothing that we're saying now is to try to like change the narrative or take away from the scenario, the seriousness of the situation. However, we want to acknowledge that we live in a world where 3 million people just lost their jobs. Now, I'm not going to give the exact statistic because I don't know it. Sister, you know the statistic on the unemployment rate for black for, for black trans people? For black trans people? I don't think I have that. I know that it's a large percentage of us that are under and unemployed. And that's, they had a statistic that they released last year and I could look it up. But the bottom line is, is majority of us are under and unemployed. I want to say it was something along the lines of seven out of 10 of trans women of color. And that is an, it is a very large employment rate, unemployment rate. And I want to put into the space that we oftentimes are living in situations where our living situation is not the most stable. And now under this administration, some of the programs that were supporting a lot of the funding is, is drying up in some, especially in the South, where Medicaid and a lot of the the, the funding for HIV AIDS and Ryan White funding was not extended in the way that it should. We've seen a lot of shutdown of critical services that were supporting the trans community, right? And mm-hmm. so with that being said, I feel like we don't need to really be so judgmental when we see online, because I've seen, and, and the reason why we added this is because I think Sis was saying, and I was acknowledging also, that we're seeing that sometimes the world can be judgmental to people that are having to do what they have to do to survive. And so, oh, of- also to speak to your number, a record, and I'm, mm-hmm. re- I'm taking this from an article, a record 3.3 million Americans filed for unemployment as the U.S. tries to contain COVID-19. So bitches, 3.3 million of y'all cisgender Lost folks, y'all jobs just recently last month. No, this this article is from March twenty sixth. Oh, so, so that's this month. Well, yeah, 
But just to say, y'all are in the, y'all are just like us. Y'all are every everybody is out here with no pot to piss in, no window to throw it out of, trying to figure out how they're going to make ends meet. So no nobody should be judging people for doing fucking sex work. No, nobody, everybody is out here trying to put the pieces together. And bitches that wanted to read social service programs and saying how, oh, it's not important and I want to be, because I'm Rep- Republican or I'm this and I don't believe in social service programs. But 3.3 million of y'all bitches filed for unemployment, a social service program. You can't you can't mm-hmm. determine how life is going to and I hate when people try to s- say oh I have money and you need to get on my level and all of this like you don't know when life is going to hit you so instead of judging folks for doing what they have to do and survive you need to extend grace to people because you never know when you could be in the same position everybody out here is making it mhm so we don't we don't have room to judge people or to criticize people and tell people people everybody can't stay in the house. If everybody was in the house, how how is everybody else going to go to the store, buy groceries, and do all of the other things to kind of keep the keep up the economy moving? It's like people just get on social media and just say dumb shit like they're like they're above it, and you're not. But I'm sorry for cutting in. Go ahead, girl. I'm sorry. No, that wasn't actually a cut in, sis. That was you, you very valid point. No, 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 sis. Bitch, you, you it's over, girl. Listen, I told you, I live when you talking, bitch. I'm I'm always paying attention. Um, I was gonna say when we're talking about these three million people too, I think we need to remember, like, and, and, and this is you it's not that there's nothing you didn't already say, but I really just wanna say, I think we need to remember that we need to have each channel each other with grace and dignity and understanding and realizing that at the end of the day we're doing all doing the best we can under the the most dire of circumstances we weren't expecting when 2020 hit for this for us to the whole world be on pause we are all struggling and doing what we have to do and making decisions to feed our families and we are all gagging bitch that's what we're doing gagging and and, and because we're gagging i think you (laughs) need to remember that people gag in their own way if i want to gag on a dick let me do what i do right and and not me in particular i'm just that was me being facetious of course but i mean i'm i'm speaking like for the people that are engaging is and and doing what they have to do let's let people live and let live and, and manage how they manage now do I now on a perfect health notice? Would I advise any anybody that asks my opinion stay your ass in the house, bitch, or don't come on nowhere near from around me? Okay, but the reality of it is is that I can't tell people what they got to do to feed themselves. That is an individual choice. Listen, I know I'm staying my black ass in the house, but it's privilege, right? Because I have a house and a pot and a window. There are some people that are doing what they have to do to survive. So, bitch, survive. We all got to get through hard times. And all the, and a whole bunch of y'all is watching porn anyway. So and don't... let me just give a shout out. I did it on my Facebook page, and I feel like because I come off as very safe sometimes, I really gas the girls when I really be my real personality because I'm also a sex goddess. I want to just give a shout out to my amateur content providers, the people on Twitter, you the know, only the fans girls, the only, the only fans girls. But I'm speaking to the niggas too because see, we don't give them enough love. It's some men putting out some amazing, the good content. Like and I said, the only the only fans girls. She loves porn. I love y'all, and I want to thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to acknowledge the men folk too, because see, we don't acknowledge that often. No, Listen. I was I was saying the OnlyFans girls. I was including I was including them too. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> they oh. are they are they are sisters in community too. I mean, <laughs> but for the even for the fellas, the heterosexual fellas, I want to acknowledge it because bitch, we got men that's listening because they live they live for us too. 
And I want to acknowledge y'all. I appreciate you too, brother. You just keep busting them nuts, you thick daddy brother. I live for it. All my daddies out there. Put out more content. I'm watching. I'm lurking. Now. I'm not calling you and I don't want no parts. But I enjoy the 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 hedonism that is happening in people's houses as y'all get more and more bored. <laughs> I live. I live, I live, I live. So we want to transition. Speaking of things we live for, girl, in this time, in this season, in this moment, while we're in the house, one of, um, porn is one of my joys. I'm going to just keep it 100 because I'm just going to be gangster like that to say that. But I know there's a lot more in the world that I have that I enjoy. But we were going to talk about what are some strategies or some things. What are some things you're doing, bitch? for joy like what are your joys right now in this moment and then how do you plan on seeking that what do you plan on accomplishing because i feel like in this time we ain't got nothing else to do what you're trying to accomplish so first tell me your joys and your accomplishments um well really i do, i do what i've been doing i i think i'm a mixture of introvert and extrovert but i enjoy being in the house and um, just being, and I'm an only child, so I enjoy being by myself. So what I do for joy is burning my candles, burning my oils, honey, having an aroma in my house. I yeah. love listening to my music. Um, I just got into this new artist. She's from the UK. Her name is Brie Runway. I think she is over. She's like a little, she's like dark skin, like really, really pretty. She sing and she rap. Mm. Um, she has one song called All Night. And then she has another song called Ape Shit. Like I really want her to like, to get her life because like, I don't know, you just don't really see the industry really go up for dark girls. Like, she's a, just a dark chocolate girl, and she's just, like, she's that bitch, and I just really live for her music. But no, I just be I just be in here listening to my music, watching my YouTube um, reality show. Shout out to Chasing Dallas again. Um, listening to my podcast. Like, I just try, I just try to do stuff that um, makes me happy. I can't really say the porn thing, because I'm a regular porn watcher anyway. So, like, it, you know, it was. But I just like, want to end this time, bitch. I'm watching more than I've ever watched. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know, I have, I have like a healthy porn um, collection. I am definitely subscribed to some OnlyFans people, but that Ooh, I was, I was using business. porn. I love how you support Black business, girl. You got to. Um, but I was um, using porn to help me get through my bar um, prep time, so that that was nothing new. But I just tried to, um, yeah, I just tried to to cook from time to time and just mainly it's just me listening to my music watching my tv um i'm trying to think of what shows i'm watching on see so B boomerang the new season just came out that show was really cute. girl i almost got too deep just then i was about to be i was about to say but but no we got to get more comfortable with our fan base before we get into our porn kinks that's intense oh no 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 that that's another conversation <laughs> now, i wasn't going all the way there J just know no no no, because, no i was willing to go that's what i was oh no 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 <laughs> i'm not ready to have that conversation on this episode <laughs> Not on this. That's what I was going to say. It's gonna. You're gonna have to really look, girl. They're gonna have to stroke me a little bit, girl. Give me a few subscribers. Make me feel it. Make me know it right. before I get. Yeah, not getting all. Oh, you're not getting pushing. all of that. But um, no. Boomerang is cute. I got. I, I'm trying to get into the other show, the Twenty Show, um, by Lena Waithe. Um, that's cute. Um, what else am I really? I'm not really. It's not really nothing good on TV right now that I'm watching. Um, but yeah, mm. I'm just, I'm just trying to just, it's just little things. There's only but so much you can do in a day. So that's what I'm doing. So my joys, I'm taking this time to kind of, well, one, I'm never ever. So this is why chasing Atlanta and all that was really impactful for me because I've never really been a TV watcher. Like I will, I have my things that I will watch on TV if I'm if it's on. I have things that I'll even put on the TV in the background sometimes, because particularly because, especially during this time, my husband is one of those essential folk that's doing what they got to do. So I'm home alone, and I'm kind of anxious because he's not here. You know, it's, the world is a crazy place, and so I'm trying. So so now I find myself having the TV on more than ever just because to have something in the background, not seeing any of the news, because that shit about to drive me crazy. But anyway, neither here nor there. 
but but I find myself really, really, really getting into like praying and like like really like appreciating walks with the dog. I have a beautiful husky named Carolina, Lady Carolina Evangelista Turner to be specific. And she is the apple of my eye. I think she's the most beautiful thing that ever walked the earth. She has the most gorgeous ice blue eyes and and, and she's playing now um, on my deck in front of me and I just, I thank God for her anyway. I'm appreciating her in this moment and my cat. And let me tell y'all my cat's name. And, and no lie, I have had this cat. And the, let me tell you the importance of my cat. My cat is 14 years old and I've had her since she was three months old. And I adopted her from the Humane Society. There's a whole story behind it. I hated cats, but I went in and this, I went in because they shut down a puppy mill and they had announced on the TV, come and adopt. And I was trying to get it and the line was around the corner and I was number 231 and they shut it down because they didn't want to overstress the animals. So I was supposed to come back the next day and get a dog. However, they said, we're doing a special on animals. And I went with my brother and we were he wanted to go see cats i hate cats was scared of cats my mom scared of cats she kind of passed that on to me but anyway we go to the cat area and this lady is holding this cat her name was bar i want to say it was barbara ba, bobby ann or it was one of those like daddy and mama name put together and she was this beautiful older southern lady and she was holding this cat and the cat had lipstick on it and she Kiss she because she had been kissing on it and she was letting people hold it because this particular cat was I guess really social and friendly and it was like the kind of like the pet that they liked at the facility so my brother ho grabs that cat and he immediately puts it on me I thought he was gonna pet it he throws it on my chest and I'm holding it and the thing starts purring and I'm like okay this isn't horrible he takes it from me he ends up adopting that cat now me. I'm like, mm -mm, I'm still not really feeling it. I'm looking around. She hands me different cats. I'm like, I don't really want to touch no more. That one was cute, but I don't know. And there's this one cat that's screaming off in the corner. And this is my baby. And she's screaming off in the corner. And no lie, I said, she sounds like grandma. I was talking to my brother. I said, she sounds like grandma. My grandmother has been, my grandmother, my father's mother has passed away years and years ago. And... I just remember saying to him, she, she sounds like Grandma d because my grandmother had this particular really high yell when she would call us in from the yard, and it just sounded like her. And I jokingly said, I want to see this cat. We go over, it's my cat. Now, I'm going to tell you her name in a minute, but I want to tell you this story. So the cat's in the cage, and she's screaming and hollering and hollering, and the lady goes, this is Casey. That, that was her jail name. That's what I call it. So that was her jail name, Casey. So she, this is Casey, and Casey, you know, was found with um, a, a, a sibling, and apparently Casey had been, somebody had tried to beat her over the head, and they, what, they, they tied her up in a trash bag and threw her away when she was the baby. And they had kind of taken care of Casey, but because of that, Casey had trust issues and she kind of was very antisocial. And they said they wanted Casey, she told me she wanted Casey to go, they were saying that they wanted Casey to go to an experienced cat owner. Well, I said, I want to see her. Just can I see her? I just want to see her. And she kind of looks at me and she goes, okay. So she pulls Casey out and Casey's struggling and struggling and she's kind of like holding her. And, and then she kind of comes down a little bit and immediately the cat kind of like reaches, you know, like a, how a baby or like a small thing reaches for you. And it mm -hmm. reaches and it gets into my arm. And sis, I lied to you not, it started purring. And she said, oh, she likes you. She was an older Southern lady. Oh, she likes you. Oh, I've never seen her. Oh, look. And she, she taps another lady that's like giving cat, one of the other cats water. And she taps one of the other attendants. She goes, look it, look it, look it. And she goes, oh, you need to. And I was like, and I looked at her in that moment and I gave her her first name. I was like, your eyes, she has these beautiful, so she's a tabby, gray and um, gray, black and white tabby. And she's got the 
but the way her markings are, it looks really Egyptian around the eye. She has this really heavy eyeliner and these beautiful green eyes, beautiful, almost smoky gray green eyes. And so my lady, Cleopatra is what I called her immediately. I was like, oh, you look like an Egyptian beauty, like Cleopatra. And so that's what I called her. So over the years, her name evolved. And so her name is, and I gave her a new name as she got birthdays or I just thought of something new. And we got up to this, we got up to this. So her name is the, the lady, Cleopatra Leontine, St. James, Turner, Onassis, Rothschild, Windsor, Shaw, Patel. <laughs> and that's my cat, Cleo. <laughs> that's her whole name. She's old money. That's why I gave her all them names. If you listen, anybody that like knows history in the world, I kind of cross the globe with all of the names of the richest people from different cultures. And that's how I came up with her. Because when I tell you that's the grandest bitch, and I was homeless with that cat at a certain point in my life. And I've told her, if you stick with me, kid, we're going to the top. So I try to honor my promise. And so my life today is a testimony because I always looked at this cat and was like, damn it, bitch. I told you, we, I, it was like a motivation for me to make sure, because I know her beginning of her life was terrible. And when I adopted her, I made the promise that I would make it better. So that was my motivation. So that's my lady. And that's why she has such a grand name because I said she owe money and I got to take care of her. <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah that's my joy it's my babies and my life and my home and my husband and just being in the house and praying and trying to get focused and this podcast that's definitely and you Brianna in this moment that we're in right now like this is our natural friendship and I love that we're still having it in this really casual free-flowing way because i think that's what's beautiful about us is this is life we're not really doing anything that's extra sophisticated we actually are the kind of people that have these conversations and i think that's important for people to see is just the intelligence and the gifts that just trans women have and how, that we have and that's not saying that we're exceptional we are actually common to each other in the circle of excellence that we operate in and right. i think that's something that we need to be shared more mm -hmm. you know I, sometimes i think that worked against me because i think when people when we, people when you say that you're trans pe people are just expecting you to just be like out of control or just turn up all the time and i'm very quite boring or like when i date guys and they and they they're i think their idea of trans is just be being like extra or be just being trannylish all the time and i'm like yeah that's not me and you could just tell that they were expecting more so no we we regular people i mean we regular people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we are we are we are we are and we live in a world where like i love the diversity um let me ask you do you follow the olympics i do and i am grieving 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 for two reasons one i used to be an athlete and one it was my dream to be flow joe one day that's why that trans conversation yesterday was particularly like hitting home for me like because now i feel like i could run and compete even though i know i can't because i have injuries that i sustained <laughs> that will prevent me from ever being able to really compete on that level however i i still am really fascinated with the olympics and bitch i am over it that it's not happening and then i also have a cousin that was supposed to compete this year. She competed in the last Olympics, and I believe she placed. I want. I don't want. I want to say silver medal, um, in in weight in um weightlifting. She she's she's a petite, pretty little girl. But when I tell you, my cousin can lift some weights, honey. She does deadlifting. Um, shout out to my cousin. Um, Lord, it's so many of them, and they all start with the letter J. And I'm I'm, I'm I, we've been talking so long. But <laughs> her name will come to me. It is. Not Judy, George, Jill, Jenny, Jane, Jill, Jenny, Jane. They, if they were listening, they would be laughing right now because that's that's literally the name. 
Julie. No, Julie's the old. Okay. Do, 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 do. I want to say it's my cousin Jenny. Jenny, Jenny, it is. It is Jenny. Jenny, I love you, girl. Jenny Arthur. She's competing for the U.S. Olympics, or she was going to this year. She qualified. She was. She she placed in the last Olympics. She was going to compete again this time. Shout out to my cousin Jenny Arthur. Love you. Yeah, I I'm not really into sport, so I. It's no, it's no shade. I didn't feel no type of way. I'm not, I'm not a sports girl. I'm not. Oh. Mm -mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not. I mean, the 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 colors of the rings. I mean, that's cute, but I'm not. I count, I count down the times, sis. Like literally, I'm one of them people. The Olympics when it comes on, but starts becoming a part of my TV for the weeks that it's on. Like, I literally, I gotta catch swimming. I gotta catch some gymnastics. I gotta catch a little bit of figure skating. I gotta catch some like that's it's it's serious for me. It's serious for me. It is well, the figure skating is winning Olympics, but you uh, you I, I gotta catch my track and field. Now track and field, I'm gonna watch all of that, and I'm gonna follow the the heats. I'm gonna watch all the heats. Oh yeah. The only, the only reason I watch track and field is to see um the meat, the men with the meat in their little suits. I mean. That's all. That's all. That's I, another good reason to watch. I'm not gonna lie, bitch. That's another amazing reason to watch. I I want to appreciate the the era of the unitard with no draws. Thank you for your ministry. But I also appreciate the talent. And I and I like I said to me, just I I root for our country, and I know the names of my favorite athletes that are, are track athletes. And like, yeah, I'm still in it, girl. So for me. I am devastated that the Olympics is not happening, but I understand it, but I'm still devastated because as an athlete, I know you don't have very long, like who can wait four more years to do this again? So hopefully they're postponing it to something in reasonable like 2021. And even then that's still difficult because you were in prime condition. Like, bitch, I know what it takes to get ready for something like that. And this is really damaging. So shout out to all the athletes. That's just insane to me. But I understand COVID is here and we got to do what we got to do. So we're we're almost at the two hour mark. So I think it's safe to end the episode here. Yes, it's a perfect ending. So do you have any final words? I do. I want to say thank you for everyone that has liked and subscribed and gave feedback and all of the loved ones and family and friends that have given great condolences and love to me and, um, and salutations to me and Brianna. Thank you so much because it really means something that you, we are being, that I feel like we're being supported and I would be remiss if I didn't say that I am in a place of gratitude in my life right now. And I want to thank my allies and my loved ones and my friends, even no matter how complicated the relationships are. I just want to say I love you. And in the effort of spreading love and light, I want everything that you touch to prosper as well. So that's my last word. And I want to I want to thank everybody um, for listening and for supporting and for getting the word out there. Also, again, don't forget that we are on all major streaming um, or podcast platforms. Uh, don't forget to send your letters, send your comments to our email box number 512 podcast at gmail.com. Also, I want to send special energy to my friends who are supposed to be getting their bar results back from the state of Illinois. Um, they, should, they should definitely be out by the time this episode drops, but de definitely just want to um, lift them up, send them positive energy. I don't get my results back until May, and I'm praying to God that I pass because I do not want to go through the process of preparing for the bar again. So just let's just keep everybody in prayer, and hopefully everybody gets up. Can I say this real fast? You did pass, and we're going to speak it, and it is so. We're not even speaking and operating in doubt, baby. You passed that. Yes, ma'am. I so, believe in it. My faith tells me that you passed. Amen. We will we will live we will leave that here and we will see you next week on box number five twelve podcast. Bye. Bye. Love y'all. Bye. Thank you for listening to Box Number 512. And don't forget to subscribe.
and like all of our pages on social media. And don't forget to subscribe so you can see what we'll stock on the shelf next week. Bye.